What's up, YouTube? I'm so excited. Never been this excited to receive a fake G-Shock watch. Time to compare these two puppies, the real and the fake G-Shock One Piece. Let's get started. Let's go. Alright guys, so just so you know, the G-Shock GA110 Japan One Piece Edition is a successful watch. A lot of demand for it, it sold out pretty fast, and now people are trying to take advantage of that um, demand. So with that being said, people have started releasing this fake G-Shock One Piece on the right side here. It's a GA110 and it's obviously disgusting. But for the person who is not a collector and is first time buying a watch, perhaps a fan of uh, One Piece, they might buy this and I have a clue that it's fake. So this video is here to help uh, the audience and anyone who's not a collector and doesn't have an eye for distinguishing counterfeit G-Shocks to help them out. So let's get started right away. The basic and most obvious um, sign of this counterfeit is the size of the box. As you can see the real one on the left here, the fake one on the right, it's about a third of the size in terms of the box. I measure these boxes. The real one is 4.5, or I should say about, yeah, about four and a half inches uh, by, there we go, let me see, let me show you guys. A four and a half inches, you see that? Square, so four and a half inches all around. The fake one on the other hand, it's three inches by four. So here it is right here. You see that's about three inches by four and that's how you can tell the difference now the four and a half versus three um so make that a mental note if the box is small you can tell right away that that's a fake one piece all right moving on to the next sign it's right here look at the one piece logo on the box the left one is the real one of course and you can see the quality on the print um Look at the straw hat on the top here, how it's perfectly there. And the fake one, it looks like somebody edited it on Microsoft Paint. Let me show you guys, look at that. Like they put squares. <laughs> Completely messed that all up. It's kind of funny, but again, if you're not looking and know what to look for, you may get uh, burned. So another thing here, the back of the watch or the box, you have the model number on the real one. The GA110 JOP 5146 module right there. On the fake one, you don't have that. You have this SKU or QR code, I think they call them, um, which is kind of funny because I scanned it and it comes to this page. And there's some Chinese characters. I'm like, what, you know, what does this mean? So I looked it up. I did a, a uh, translation and it pretty much means I am a small promise. I am a small promise. I don't know why they did that, but it's kind of ironic that they would put that quote there. I am a small promise, considering that this is a fake watch, right? Promise to be faked out. Um, if anybody knows or can read uh, these Chinese characters, please comment below. What does that say? I'm gonna suggest the same thing or what does this all say? I'm, I'm guessing this is where they're being manufactured, but you tell me, okay? Now let's open it up. The fake one again, real one on the side. Okay, you'll see that right away. And this is not the easiest way. The warranty cards have been faked for a while now. But even then, they can't get it right. Okay, you can tell. And I won't I won't go into details because unless you have the real one to compare to, anybody can be faked by a warranty card. So I'm not going to really show you guys um, how to compare the warranty cards because it's kind of pointless. All right, I'm going to show you the obvious ways to compare the watches, um, not the hardest ways, okay? The warranty, the, the uh, manual itself is also different, all right? user's guide versus this here just it just looks different right guys so keep make a mental note of that but don't worry too much about those two things because it's a lot complicated unless you have one to compare with 
All right inside the box, you'll see that there's this pocket here for your manual and your warranty card. The fake one does not have that, all right? It's pretty much just folded open like that. And here you get this beautiful, gorgeous tin can. <laughs> sarcasm, okay guys, sarcasm. All right, so here's the tin can. So you can see they tried really good. They tried, they tried to mimic the design of the um, one piece actual tin box. You'll see that the tin can itself has got these indentations on the side here, um, which, are not, which are not um here on the original right so you have the, these little buckles here on the top um buckles on the top of the can uh but not there's not a recess part on the top can on the top of the can there so that's kind of obvious okay you also have this nice recess area here in the center nothing there on the fake all right on the side here you can see there's like rivets or like a pin they pinch the uh metal of, of the can on the bottom here kind of around the edge or you can see like it looks like it's pinched or or pressed on the bottom of the tin can that's not the case on the real one you can see it kind of flushes down to the base there's a lip here um okay so that's kind of one way to tell now if you buy the watch without the tin cans be very careful because the tin cans are an obvious um uh, this way to dis distinguish the real from the fake but if it still has the tag you'll notice that the tag itself is also um just misrepresented okay that you have the casio g-shock on the tag in the front on the real one here's the fake one it's got this fake tag under which again if you don't know what to look for you may be mis um, confused or um tricked right in the back you should have the SKU number the model number the SKU number and the price tag and the, and the model and the uh, module number this one's blank now that's easy I believe in my opinion it's easy to print so even if you see that don't let that be uh, a, a, a complete way of determining if this is real or fake all right moving on before we get into the design and the aesthetics of the watch let's talk about the most the easiest way I think to tell if a G-Shock is fake and this applies to all GA110s and a lot of the other models as well Right, and that's by the back plate. Okay, you'll notice on the real one on the left, the G Shock, um, the back plate is flushed, so it's flat to the surface, and that comes that's for comfort reasons. You don't want it to uh, be uh, imprinting on your wrist or hurting your wrist. Um, and you can see it here uh, when you do a side by side. Look at how how flat the real one is compared to the fake. There's some. And they're getting they're improving on it but there's some, some uh, there's like a little lip there on the fake right let's see if i can show you guys right there you can see that lip there okay that little raised cover versus the real one it's flat all right see that it's pretty flat okay that's one way the second way is that most fakes um have this little sticker here with a little client i don't know why they do that i compl i don't understand why they would do that it's just a telltale to uh collectors that that's a fake um trigger okay so you that, that, right, that's right away you would tell that that's a fake um watch all right also the font on the real one and it's smudgy j110 jp you could tell the fake one is a little smaller uh they couldn't replicate that um uh, very well and it's also not very clear or um legible um when you read it otherwise they they did well in terms of copying um with the one-on-one copying what it says on the actual watch all right now let's talk about the actual design and quality or actually the um design of the watch first of all you'll notice that the fake one on the right here has a sticker now this is kind of another te great telltale sign of a fake watch Real ones never come with this plastic sticker on the top, guys. You can see I can peel it right off um, right here. It's hard to see, but see that? How it's peeling off? There's a sticker there. The real G-Shocks, I have never seen any G-Shock whatsoever in all my years of collecting that have that plastic sticker on the, on the glass, okay? So that's a telltale. So if you feel the rubbery um, screen, 
that's an indication that your watch is fake. Now, another one you'll see um, the real one versus the fake is that the print on the watch, and this is gonna be hard to tell if you don't have the real one to compare to, but the G-Shock logo or the print on the real one is gold, and it's actually um, brighter than the flat G-Shock on the fake, all right? You can also see that the font is bolder on the fake one, like the S, the H, right? The K, you see how thin that is compared to the fake one, all right? And a very kind of stand, something that stands out the most is that the hour and minute hands on the real one are gold, but they're also metal and they're um, reflective. These are yellow um, and they're not reflective. They, they look plasticky. All right, if that makes any sense. These are metal versus plastic. Very small, but smart or easy way to tell. All right, then next to wanted on the right here, you can see that the fake one is flat color. Okay, and the real one is, there's a glossy, um, kind of glossy design there, which reflective material there, kind of a glass material. So you can tell that easily as well. All right. Um, the colors here are more vibrant, believe it or not, on the fake one. Uh, they're more flat and muted on the real one on the left here. So um, this actually looks pretty nice, to be, to be honest, but it's not consistent with the real watch. All right, you'll see the color again is vibrant, more colorful on the fake one. It looks painted versus this one feels like it's done differently. The technology behind how they print on these watches is different from these. This kind of feels like it's a... Um, I don't know if it's want to call it a, a press job or some kind of um, sticker job, but this is more printed versus this is like pasted, if that makes any sense. Like this might scratch off easier compared to that. And the colors don't match whatsoever. All right. And then also notice that there's some um, glaring defects on, on the print job. Um, it doesn't match whatsoever. The font is thicker. And the details are not as good on the fake versus the real. All right, you can't make out, for example, his hair right here. You can see his hair. Look at this. The details are missing on that. Okay, right there. You're just missing a lot of the details on this watch. And that applies to the bezel as well. I noticed that there's some areas where um, like here, look how this is kind of just like a blob of paint versus some more details on this part there. Okay. On the real one, the print carries through the bezel, overlapping the little crevice here. On the fake one, it stops like right there. Okay. Look at the other side of the band. Again, more details on the real one. Here is his six pack. Looks like, I don't know, leaves from a tree. <laughs> abstract thinking, right? Looks just different. Look at his mouth. You can see his teeth here. Looks like a goblin. I'm going to open up the case and show you guys the real movement on the Japan Quartz versus that of the fake one. So you can see where, um, where the difference is in terms of quality on these watches. All right, so I'm gonna open up the back plate of the real one first. Now I'm gonna unscrew the uh, fake one. You'll see that the um, there's a difference in the actual screws. The uh, real one, it's flat tip and the fake one is looks like a cheaper version of a screwdriver or a screw I mean all right so I'm gonna, here's a look at both of them pull the back off the real one set it to the side and you have the traditional um, kind of the, the plastic here that protects the case uh, keeps it from moving you have the battery that's also enclosed enclo back there. You have the little um, uh, signal here, conductor. That's for your alarm chime. All right, so you have that. That's physically visible 
Um, so if you open up your case back and you doesn't you don't see that, be um, very careful. And here you have your traditional fake G-Shock or uh, your fake G-Shock um, case. You do have this spring there, but it's a lot more robust. It's bigger. Um, you have this false raised cam canvas here or cavity that um, that's why they need that extra space on the back plate to fit this module there. All right, so you can see the difference there. Pretty obvious in terms of quality, okay? All right, so right away you can tell which one's the fake. If you open up your watch, easy telltale sign. If you don't have this one to compare, you can easily take a quick look underneath the um, hood of your uh, fake G-Shock or your watch, and you can tell if it doesn't look like this, um, you have a fake one in your hands. Okay, now I'm going to put this together. I'm going to close it back up. I'm going to show you guys how the functions work and see how different um, in comparison they are. All right, I set the time on. I set the time on both of these watches and you can see that they're both set to the identical time. Um, I did that on purpose. I want to see how they both keep time in terms of comparison. Um, it looks like this one's a little bit faster, just slightly faster so far. Now the backlight, it looks pretty much similar. Maybe just a little bit dimmer. It's brighter on the real one versus the fake. Okay. You notice that the uh, hand operation only goes in the clockwise direction. It won't go counterclockwise. So if push and hold the top left button, here, the top right button here should be able to go on the opposite direction counterclockwise, but it doesn't. This one fake one only goes in clockwise direction. Okay. The real one on the other hand, I could go in clockwise and then counterclockwise. Okay. And you'll notice that the, um, the motion or the operation of the actual mechanics behind the watch are much more smoother. There's no jumping in the hand, much faster mortar, and much quieter. The, our hand is still, doesn't flinch, doesn't bounce like the fake one. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was um, educational. Please uh, stay away from these fake watches. I know they are, um, if you can't afford the real one and they're hard to find and you want something that's um, similar to it, but I recommend you don't. It's just bad quality, bad craftsmanship, and the watch will not last you very long. Um, it is just, they're just made poorly. Now tell me, uh, I'm gonna take a vote out there. Please make suggestions on what you think I should do with the fake one. Any suggestion you can think about, whatever gets the most likes, will I will personally do that to that watch. I don't have a I don't have to return this watch; it's mine to keep. So, if you want, guys, want me to whatever you want me to do, make a suggestion, put a comment below, and the or whatever option gets the most likes, I will go ahead and do exactly what you guys think I should do with this watch. I can't wait; it's exciting. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. All G-Shock content, reviews, comparisons, um, information about what's coming out. Um, a lot of content. Hopefully you enjoy this. If you do, please hit the like button. I would truly appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. A lot of stuff I do with you guys, interactive uh, videos, giveaways, and somewhat some, some fun content, I believe. Thanks so much for watching, guys. So next time, this is I'm out of here. This is Chicago. I'll let you boy. Peace. I'm rocking my T 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 I'm rocking my T